All righty. Well, um, so glad that you're here this morning to celebrate Mother's Day with us. It's uh, always a fun uh, sermon that I get to preach every single year on um, on the, about time and what time, why time matters, and making sure that we are making the most of opportunities in our life as our as parents, as friends, as workers, uh, as as now grandparents for me. Um, and so time, so time is very important, and so we need to take advantage of it, and make sure that we understand. Uh, just what that looks like and why that matters. Um, and so my, really my message this morning that I have for you is, is, is how do we optimize our time? What are some things that we can do to optimize our time? Because it's important. Uh, so I want to share with you four things. I know this one's going to be extra spiritual because I have four things instead of three. And so you're going to get a little extra today. So I'm not going to charge you anything extra. You're going to get, what is that, 13.5% more for free. And so take advantage of that. 1995, it was going to cost you, but we're not going to charge you anything. But I do have this word for you this morning that, that I think is important for us to see and understand because when we get a hold of this truth and when we see what God wants us to do with our time, I think it's going to help us. Uh, take advantage of the future because I think sometimes in our life we don't really realize you're just blinking. And I know for me as a, as a parent, you know, I'd hear people say when they were little bitty, you know, our girls are 13 months apart and they would say, man, just wait, you know, just, you're going to, you're going to miss these days one day. And, um, and I didn't believe them. 13 months apart, I did not believe, anybody, can I get a witness in the room that you didn't believe them that you're going to miss those days? Y'all, y'all, I miss those days. I don't want to go back there. There's a difference. I don't want to go back there, but I do miss those days. I miss the days of when my kids were little, and so I just kind of overlooked some things that didn't take advantage when I should have. And so we have to make sure that we are optimizing our time to make the biggest impact with the time. It's the only thing you can't get back. You can make more money. Uh, you can probably make more friends. Possibly you got to be friendly. I'm not telling you not to go cut, all, cut a bunch of cords with people, but I am telling you the one thing you can never get back is time. And so I want to talk to you about that this morning. And we're going to be in Ephesians 5 because we're in this series about Ephesians, a study of Ephesians. And so I love some of these verses. We're going to start in verse 14, and we're going to go through about verse 22. But check these verses out. This is so powerful. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper. Uh, the song that we sang, the first song that we sang was uh, was uh, Wake Up Sleeper. And so I want, I want you to wake up. My, my prayer for you this morning is that this, this sermon wakes you up. This message wakes you up. He says, Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. That's so important. Then he says this in verse 15. So... Now, another version might say, therefore, and so we're reading, reading the NLT, but some versions say, therefore, and when you see a therefore, you got to find out what it's, all right, got it. You got to find out what is there for. He says, so, so the Lord's going to give you light. Wake up, O sleeper. I want you to pay attention. Wake up. Uh, I'm not just waking you up so you can just stare at the wall. I want you to wake up and pay attention. Therefore, so be careful how you live. Because God's waking you up, he's saying, be careful how you live. I want you to do something with your life. Be careful how you live. Not like, don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. And so we need to make sure that we are, we are careful about what we do. We want to we optimize our time with each other, with our family, uh, in the church. Uh, listen, I just believe that Jesus is coming back soon, and we want to get you guys equipped and, and in the right place and with the tools that you need and ready to go do some damage to the kingdom of darkness. That's what we want you to do. That's our, that's our goal for you is to help others encounter Jesus in the way we do that. It's not to get everybody in here, but to get you out there serving him at your job site, on the baseball team, uh, wherever it might, you might, it might find you on the beach in the summer, uh, in, the, in the mountains in the winter, wherever you find yourself coming up in the next six weeks or six months. We want to equip you to go there because not everybody's going to fit in here, obviously. We added 50 chairs six weeks ago, and look around. like Those are gone, all right? So we can't get everybody here, but we can get you out there, all right? We can get you out there serving. So it says, therefore, I want you to not, don't live like fools. Be careful how you live. And so the word that I have for you this morning is optimizing these opportunities. Here's a word I want you to remember. So this is all wrapped around this idea right here. Check this out. Opportunities not optimized become blessings unrealized. When you don't optimize your time, you don't optimize opportunities, you're going to miss some blessings in your life. I can look back now at people that I work with that I didn't optimize my time with them. And, and I'll tell you, they've, they've, God wanted me to pour into them, and I didn't do it. I didn't optimize the opportunity. There are times as a parent that I have missed the target. I have missed the thing that I was supposed to do that I was supposed to teach. And so instead, I disciplined what I should have been teaching. And so I missed those opportunities. But when we optimize our opportunities, I'm going to give you four ways to do that. Opportunities that aren't optimized become blessings unrealized. Today is a blessing. Tomorrow is a blessing. As a parent, I wish somebody would have told me, loosen up. I, I, wish, I wish I'd have heard that over and over. Just, just, it's not that important. It's not that important. Loosen up a little bit. Let go of the reins a little bit. 
The Lord has shown me that as a grandfather, we, we have a, a new patio behind our house, and we hang out there all the time until it gets to be, you know, 117 degrees o'clock. And we, we do. We love it. In the mornings, we'll go sit out there, you know, on the weekends. We just love it. And so now we have the grand young as in. Emily and Luke are in from Oklahoma, and they brought Ava, praise Jesus, because that's what we really needed to see was Ava. She's 16 months old. Um, but they're here, and, of course, Megan and Anton's uh, little, little, uh, little crew, uh, Parker and Ava. I mean, Parker and Judah. Hello. I got so many grandkids now, I can't keep up, right? I got three. But they're out there playing, and so they're sand that gets on the concrete, and everybody's tracking mud on the concrete. It's brand new concrete. Y'all, it still looks new. And the Lord was showing me, now, I don't, it's grandkids. You don't get upset about grandkid mud. But the Lord showed me what I wish I'd have known as a parent. That it's not mud, it's a memory. That's what you learn as a grandparent. It's not mud, it's a memory. They're making memories. And I wish I don't know, I'm going to tell you, if I could go back and tell you one thing, if you're a young parent today, and I know it's crazy, and you're getting three hours of sleep, and you want to kill somebody, and, and maybe, maybe that person sleeps in the bed with you, I don't know, but you're dropping heavy hints, they ain't listening. And your kids just seem to be running around. And I ain't saying don't discipline. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Like, I know some of your kids. You need to keep discipline, okay? But I'm going to say, loosen up. Loose. You only get them for a moment. Um, you know, when you're having that first dance with your daughter in, at their wedding, uh, my daughter's got married 90 days apart in the middle of the pandemic. I'll say that again for those in the back. They got married 90 days apart in the middle of the pandemic. I thought they loved us. <laughs> Turns out they loved their husbands more. But, but that first dance, man, just... That's what got me. Walking down the aisle in that first dance. It's like, you're, when they get down to the end of that aisle, you you're get down there, you're literally giving them away. You only have so much time. So let's optimize our opportunities so that we, they'll become blessings, because if not, they're going to be unrealized. Here's the first thing I want you to do is not just, just to be careful in general, but be careful with the clock. He says, I want you to live carefully. Be careful with the clock. You're going to blink, and you're going to be like me and have your 47th birthday yesterday. 47. My, Megan last night, she was like, so how old are you? Are you 50? <laughs> she used to be my favorite. You just, you blink and you turn 47. Y'all, you know how I knew I was 47? I, I, I mowed the grass and I go inside and taking a shower and I literally did this. And I, I actually got a catch right here today. When I cough, it hurts. I pulled a muscle washing my armpit in the shower. Yeah, you just blink and it goes away. Take, be careful with the clock. Put it on the calendar. Put that vacation on the calendar today. If you've been talking about it for three years, go do that thing. Don't borrow money to go do it. Save up for it, but go do it. Put that vacation on the calendar. You're going to create some memories, y'all. You're going to create memories that, that you'll never forget. One of my favorite memories, I'm going to try to get through this without laughing. I got, like, you know, I'm a little behind because of the amazing prayer time that we have, but I'm going to get through this because it's so good. We were, we were on a, we rent these um, cabins that are state uh, park cabins, and so they're, they're cheap, and um, when you get them, you realize why they're so cheap. And so we're playing cars late at night, and we're playing spades, and spades has something that not everybody knows about. It's called kneel. You can go kneel. Well, that means you don't, you don't win any points in that hand. But then they have something called blind kneel, and that means you say you're going to get zero before you ever look at your hand. And my sister... We don't play with them much because we only play on vacation. And so my wife and my sister are partners. And my wife wanted to make sure that my sister understood those rules and make sure that they had played that way before. And my wife tells my sister, Jenny, um, do you know Blind Neil? <laughs> and my, <laughs> my, <laughs> oh, my sister says... <laughs> Oh, my sister says, I know a Neil, but he ain't blind. <laughs> she was dead serious, too. Oh. Sheesh. That was eight years ago. I still laugh that hard every time I think about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so blind. Every time somebody says blind Neil or somebody walks by with glasses, they might be blind. I just lose my mind. It's just, I know a blind, a Neil, I know a Neil, but he ain't blind. Holy mackerel. 
Y'all be intent, put it on the counter, be careful with the clock. Here's what the word careful means. This is what the actual definition is, be careful. It's to see, to understand, to turn towards, to face. We need to understand that the time is ticking by. We need to make sure that we are, we are optimizing these opportunities. Time just flies by. Um, and we waste so much time, not even in our life, but scrolling through everybody else's life. Because of this message coming up, I started checking my phone. I started going to the data on it. I started going to settings and looking at the, at the screen time. Y'all, over four hours a day on my phone. Over two hours on social media. I'm just being real with y'all. That was an average recently because I, I just felt like I was getting sucked into it. But here's what I figured out. Here's how the devil, the devil is. Here's what I figured out. I don't get on my phone to get on social media. I get on my phone to answer a text. As you can look at that data. You can see why you opened your phone. I opened my phone to get on uh, to, to answer a text or answer a phone call, and then I went to social media. I didn't get on to do it, so it didn't feel like I was doing it, but I was doing it. Y'all, we have to make sure that we are looking at our data. You don't want to. I know you don't want to. I didn't want to do it. But go to settings. Go to screen time. If you have an Android, you're probably not on your phone much anyway. (laughs) But if you have an iPhone, you can go look and see. And you can see where you spend your time. It means to turn towards, to face. You need to face what you're wasting your time on because the devil's going to convince you that it ain't a big deal. It is a big deal. Your kids are growing up in front of you, not even looking at them because you're scrolling through everybody else's kids. Yeah, that was a little heavy. That's all right. You only have so much time with your kids. And so I'm going to share this morning with you. These jars represent something. So let me give you these numbers real quick. These are the weeks that you have. Every marble that you have, you had a marble when you came in. Every one of these marbles represents a week that you have with your kid from birth. From birth, you have 936 weeks. When they turn... uh, when they turn, well, that had some, got some up in there. Those marbles are trying to be sneaky. When they turn five years old, you have 676 weeks with them. And then when they turn 13, you have 260 weeks. And then when they turn uh, 16, you have 104 weeks with them. This is how fast the time goes by. It doesn't, it, I'm telling you, you just blink and it happens. So every one of these weeks represents something. It represents a week that you spent focused on your kid, avoiding your kid, um, working while your kid was at ball games. Y'all, I'm not telling that you can't, you gotta, you gotta work. You, you have to buy the uniform for them to go. I get it. I'm not trying to put that on you where you just gotta follow your kid around for the next six weeks and never just miss a minute. That's not what I'm saying. It'd be a little weird. You sit next to him in the fourth grade. That's weird. All right. But you gotta, you gotta spend your time wisely. Some people don't. It reminds me about the guy that him and his buddy went play golf every single Friday. Didn't miss a day. Every Friday, play golf. And one day they teed up first hole and they're doing well. And by the time they got to the third hole, um, they they this third hole is about a par four, about a you know 400 yard par four. Goes down the side of a highway, and he, the guy goes to line up and he stops, and he takes his hat off and he puts his hat over his heart and a funeral passes by. And so his buddy thought, man, I've never seen him do that before. He's really respecting people today. This is so cool. So they, he didn't say nothing about it, so the guy hits the ball, and so they get on down about to the ninth hole. So finally the buddy goes, I just got to ask him. I got to find out what in the world that was about. Like, I've never seen him do that ever. He said, man, I just got to ask you, dude, you just took that time to honor. You took that time to honor that funeral that passed by. I just, I just, I just had, to, I had to say something because it was just so different from you. Like, I've never seen you do that before. He said, well, I was married to her for 38 years. That's so the least I could do. Some people don't spend their time wisely, all right? And our time just fades by so fast. Look at what Psalms 39, 4 and 5 says. Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. He says, I want you to remind me, and that means to reveal. I want you to reveal to me just how fast my time is getting by, just how fast my life is flashing in front of me. Look at the next verse, verse 5. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you, at best, each of us has but a breath interlude. And he says, we're going to take a breather right here. Y'all, y'all we, are, we are, some of us wasting our life away. We are wasting our time. Uh, the data is out, y'all, and I realize that I ain't much different than the average person. I am now because I'm getting off of it. But check this out. Look at this stat. The average person spends four and a half hours a day on their phone each day. Each day, four and a half hours of your life being spent. Be careful with the clock. 
I'm going to challenge you with that. You're going to blink, today's going to be gone. You're going to blink, tomorrow's going to be gone. Be careful with the clock. All these days and weeks, they matter, they add up. Here's the second thing I want to give you. Not only just to be careful with the clock, but be intentional with relationships. Be intentional. When you're careful with the clock, you're going to be intentional with relationships. You're going to optimize those opportunities. Be intentional with your relationship. Spend some time. When you're with your kid, if you go hunting or fishing or hanging out or go to, like, try to get them to say something. If you have a teenager, that's going to be real hard to do. They want to just sit there and stare at you. Tell them to keep their phone in the vehicle. Y'all just sit there and look at each other. It's weird. But they'll talk eventually. They'll say something. Get them to say, get them to say, be intentional with your relationship with your kids, with your spouse, with your coworkers. Be intentional with your relationships. Look at verse 16 in the same passage of Ephesians 5. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. And that, that what we've been talking about, optimizing our opportunities. So it says make the most of every single opportunity. I love the way the Amplified Version says it. It says make the very most of the time buying up each opportunity. Not, not some, not when you feel like it. Each opportunity, make sure that you are focusing on each single opportunity because, these, because of these evil days. These days are evil. Buy up each opportunity, y'all. He ain't talking about Bitcoin. The opportunities he's talking about is not business opportunities. He's talking about relationships here. There won't be Bitcoin in heaven, but there will be relationship equity that you build here today will end up in heaven one day. So we have to get that. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 tells, tells us about walking in wisdom. Look at this. Look at verse 5. It says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. What he's talking about is lost people here. Walk in wisdom with those that don't know Jesus, who don't come to church, really, that, that, that say that it's all a phony, it's, it's, there's no point in you even going to church, religion is crazy, it's stupid. So walk in wisdom with those that are without, so lost people, redeeming the time. So I want you to make sure you're redeeming the time, and then look at the next verse, verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, so you may know how you ought to answer every man. Let your speech be always with grace. You know what he's saying? Make the most of your opportunities. Make the most of your relationships. Like be intentional with your relationships. Make sure that you are, you're always speaking with grace around people and with people. Be gentle with them. Man, they don't need you to be harsh. Sometimes they might. Sometimes they might feel like you're being harsh and you're just trying to be gentle. Love them with the love of Jesus. So he says, I want you to, I want you to always have grace with these people because I want you to optimize every opportunity. Which leads us to my third point that we need to do if we're going to optimize opportunities, and that's this. Be helpful with your words. If you want to do these things, if you really want to make a difference in somebody's life, be helpful with the words that you speak. Speak life over some people. Pour positivity into people. The world ain't going to give it to them. The world's going to beat them up. And each week that you spend with people, you are actually optimizing opportunities, and you are saying, this week matters. And this week matters, and this week matters. And time over time, if you begin to pour positivity into people and be careful with your calendar, all of a sudden you're making a life that's going to make a difference. And don't hear what I'm not saying. If the devil's lying to you right now and say, well, you wasted it. Your kids are grown and gone. You can still be that dad. You can still be that grandfather. It is not too late. My kids are 25, 24, and 19. It's not too late for me to be the father that God called me to be because they're still my kids, and I'm still their father. Like, pour into them. Be positive. The world's beating them up. Be positive with them and watch what God does in that situation. Look at Proverbs uh, 10, 19. I love this verse. When there are many words, sin is unavoidable. So I'm not saying to talk just to talk. I'm not saying just to make stuff up and start talking just to talk. But the one who controls his lips is prudent. I love the word prudent. One of my favorite words. In fact, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that, that wisdom and prudence are roommates. So to be prudent, you might say, well, I don't even know what that word means. Let me just give it to you. I'm glad you asked. Here it is. Check it out. Prudence is the ability to govern and discipline oneself. Do we need prudence today? And the evidence of prudence is on somebody's lips. You know, if somebody has self-control, let's listen to what they say. Listen to how they act. Be prudent. Be prudent. Be prudent. When we have prudence in our life, it's going to show up in other people's lives. Words matter. How you speak matters. What you say matters. Look at Proverbs 15, 4 in the message version. Kind words heal and help, and cutting words wound and maim. Kind words heal and help. How long has it been since you spoke a kind word over somebody? Here's a, here's a question for you today. Are your words kind or cutting? What kind of words are you speaking over your kids, over your spouse? I'm telling you right now that the world is tearing them alive. They are tearing them up with their words. In fact, the data is out. This is kind of old data, but it's probably worse now. Uh, our kids hear seven negative words for every positive one. 
For every one positive word you're telling them, they're hearing seven, seven negative from the world. Our job is to offset that number. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Listen, be helpful with your words that you speak. When you speak, speak life. You want to make the most of these marbles? Speak life over somebody. Be careful with that calendar. Be careful with that clock. And be intentional with relationships. And watch what God does. Here's the last thing I want to tell you about how to do this. If you want to optimize this time, because these marbles are flying by. We gave you one when you came in just to remind you. So I hope that you'll put that, you know, on your rearview mirror or, you know, put it in your car somewhere. Keep it in your pocket, whatever you want to do. Just take it out before your wife washes your clothes. But let it remind you that you just spent a week with your kid, with your family, and there won't be a whole lot left. You're going to blink in those weeks. They're going to be gone. There's a, there's a meme that's going around that says, uh, it's kind of sad, but it says that you never realized the last time you played with your friend in the neighborhood. There was a last time for that, and y'all never did it again because you grew up. You never know when that time, time's going to come. You never know when the, that your daughter's going to come in and go, I met him. I found him. We're getting married in six weeks. It didn't happen to me. I hope it don't happen to you, but it might happen. You never know how fast that's going to go. So make sure you're making the most of every marble. Here's the fourth thing I'll tell you because we have to have an eternal mindset too. Here's the fourth thing I'll tell you, and that's this. Be impactful to the kingdom. Make sure that what you're doing is making eternal impact. Keep a kingdom mindset, whatever you do. And not everybody's going to be open to it. Not everybody wants your help. I learned that this week. I was on the way out of town. I was going to a little retreat center for a couple of nights. I uh, should have clarified that. I was going to get some rest, okay? I'm not. Okay, let's leave it right there. Um, I was going to this little retreat place. This is like up in the mountains. And, I mean, in the mountains. Hello. In the woods. <laughs> it's in Louisiana, okay? So it's. Not in the swamp, so I'm in the woods, I'm hanging out. Anyway, before I get there, though, there's a, there's a car on the side of the road, and you could tell it was, a, it was a young lady, she's probably in her 30s, and she looked a little bougie. She looked like she probably ain't never changed a flat before. I don't know. Maybe she has. She had nails about that long. And so as I passed her, because it was kind of like 45 or 50 miles an hour, I realized it was a lady as I was passing. I thought, if that was my daughter, man, I, I can't just let her sit there. And, you know, it's like she was struggling. I mean, she was trying to get on that uh, tire tool and so anyway I passed up it was four lanes I had to pass her up and come back but I had to pass her again and when I passed her again I saw that there was a truck there and I thought man good somebody somebody's got it they're good I'll check make sure they're good and I'm gonna roll on but by the time I got to him he was back in his truck leaving she was still on that thing trying to get that tire off that car so I just pulled in too I pulled in poked my head out I was like hey can I help you she's like no I'm good I got it I'm thinking it don't look like you got it <laughs> look like you're struggling that's what it looks like but she didn't want my help. And I don't know if she was just trying to prove that she could do it to be independent. I didn't, it didn't matter to me. I was back in my truck in the AC rolling. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus, I did my part. Not everybody wants your help, but that's okay. Don't let the devil discourage you when you try to speak life over somebody. Don't let the devil discourage you when you try to make the most of a martyr and somebody's going, ain't no point in that. Yeah, there is. You're making a difference because time over time, you're going to build a life that makes a difference in other people's lives. It's time over time. Let's keep reading our passage today. Look at verse 17. It says, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Doesn't say spouse. Doesn't say kids. See what the Lord, he says, seek revelation. Find out what the Lord wants you to do. In fact, the Bible tells us if we'll reach out to him, he'll tell us. Jeremiah 33.3, my dad says this is God's phone number, J-E-R-3-3-3. This is his phone number right here. Look at what it says. It says, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know. Saying Google can't even figure it out, God will tell you. It's unsearchable. You can't even search it. He'll show you some stuff that you don't know, stuff that you can't even Google, because he wants you to have an impactful life that makes a difference in those around you. Look at verse 18, back in Ephesians 5. Don't be drunk with wine but, but, because that will ruin your life. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts, he says, I want you to wait until the Holy Spirit shows up, and then you'll be endued with power from on high. The Spirit is what brings the power. Wait. Be filled and then go. That's eternal impact. Eternal impact. Make sure you're making an impact in eternity. Look at verse 19. He keeps telling us what we should be doing. Look at this. I love this. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Some of y'all can't sing, and that's okay. You know how I know? I stand out there with y'all. That's how I know. Some of y'all are just like, oh, that's an angel singing behind me. The Lord hears something different. The Lord hears praise. He, 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 he smells something that smells great to him. Man, I love a person that just worships all the time. 
Eric Stevens, I got to talk about you, brother. Eric came to my house one day to help me with some plumbing, and it was literally freezing outside. It was almost sleeting. It was so cold, and the leak was outside. And so I'm working on neck deep, muddy, and nasty. After two days of trying, I'm just finally reached out to Eric and said, hey, uh, I need just some pointers. You don't have to come. I knew he was coming. I may or may not have known that when I called you. He shows up. It's, it is so cold outside. I'm, I'm freezing. And he starts working. It's a little bit of a headache. And he starts working. And, and as he's working, I start hearing a little something. I'm like, what's that? Somebody's got their radio on. I'm like, no, that's Eric. You didn't sound like a radio, by the way. But it was sweet to the Lord. Y'all, he was worshiping as he was walking back and forth. You know why? He wasn't helping me. He was doing kingdom work. He was singing and making music in his heart to the Lord. And that touched me, man. That was two or three years ago during that big freeze we had. And that touched me. He's worshiping in the freezing cold rain. He probably knew I was going to buy a mistake for it. But he didn't you know anything. Just, just worshiping. Just, just worship, making music in his heart. He was making the most of that marvel. Look at what else it tells us to do. Give thanks in everything. Give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for your life. This is what I want you to do. I want you to give thanks in everything. Uh, look at 1 Thessalonians 5. I love these are powerful verses right here. Three verses. Rejoice always. That's a verse. Pray continually. That's a verse. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know what God's will is for you? You're like, I just don't know what his will is in my life. Here it is right here. Start right here. Well, I, mean, I want to go be a missionary. That's amazing. Start right here. Start right here. Man, I want to go make a difference in somebody's life. I want to go, you know, I want to go start something new, something fresh. Start right here. I want to be an amazing father. Start right here. You're going to start right here. Rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for your life. And let me just tell you this. Let me just give you a little side note today. He won't tell you his specific will until you do his general will. He has a will for your life. Do this first and watch what happens. We need to make the most of our opportunities because we're going to look up one day in this big old jar with 936 marbles in it. It's, it's, it's just, it's fleeting. And every single week that passes by, and y'all, I'm a pastor, and I say this all the time, but Sunday comes around every three days because we just blink and another week's gone, and we blink and another week's gone, and we blink and another week's gone. And every single week that we spend with our family and with our, with our friends, it's one week we're not gonna have again. And we're gonna look up one day and this, these marbles, and this is how fast it goes, y'all. I'm a grandparent now, I'm telling you from a fact, it goes this fast. And you look up and you, you have a handful left, maybe there's 16, going on 17, and you blink. And a few more are gone. And a few more are gone. And they get into middle school and a few more are gone. And they get into high school and you just blink. And after high school, you look up, your kid's 18, they're ready to move out. And all your marbles are gone. We just blink and it's gone. The Bible says our, our life is but a breath, but a moment. And it's gone. We have to make the most of our time. Let me just give you a word to close off this, this message. And it's this. You won't make the most of the time if you don't make the most of this time. You won't make the most of the time until you make the most of this time. Today, this month, May, June, put it on the calendar. Go on that vacation. Do that thing you've been promising you were going to do. Because you're going to blink, you're going to look up one day, and it's all going to be gone. And I'm saying this today to encourage you. Keep that marble in your pocket. And remind yourself, I have to make the most of this week. I gotta make the most of this week because you won't get that time back again. Let's do that. Let's do these four things and watch God change the way we treat our calendars and our clocks. And he'll change your family forever. But you gotta be obedient. Take these steps.